almost three decades together. You know, there aren't many bands that can make that claim, but one of them is ours, Blue Rodeo. And at the heart of it, two high school friends, Jim Cuddy and Greg Keeler. So how have they managed to pull it off? From the start, they earn respect the hard way, touring the most far-flung parts of the country. Then there's that beautiful Blue Rodeo sound. It's ragged, it's soulful, rustic, wide screen songs that conjure up an unmistakable sense of place. What a run it's been. 13 studio albums, 4 million records sold, 12 Junos inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame alongside giants like Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, and Leonard Cohen. Their latest record, and reflects on their journey of the last 26 years is called In Our Nature. Please welcome Jim Cuddy, Greg Keeler. Oh my goodness, it's Melodio. Thanks, sir. Welcome, man. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very good. Welcome. Hello, gentlemen. Hello there. Uh, congratulations on uh, another wonderful record. How does it feel? It feels great. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. When you do it long enough, is it, is it, does it become a similar experience? Well, I like the line, uh, it, uh, try again, fail again, fail better. And it's like every time we go to make a record, you know, and I think every time anyone goes to make a record, they're trying to make the best possible record they can make, right? Everybody wants to make something fantastic. And so you have this record in your mind all the time and in the way you want it to sound. It's never as good as you imagine it, but each time you fail at trying to reach <laughs> that point... I have lower standards. It's, it's, it's always, always, I was like, well, that's way better than I expected. That's awesome. <laughs> we are fantastic. When you hear much about, and I don't know if this is true for you guys, but when you first came out, that a lot of musicians have this desire to sing, and they need to, t to tell their stories. And they, like, there's this burning in them that needs to get out in some way. And as you get older, life's change, priorities change, things change. Do you have that same kind of impetus to make the record, and same to, to, to go out there and see people again? This burning desire to sing, that's, that's sort of, I think that's sort of the burning desire to be noticed, but the burning desire, like the need to write songs and, and play in a band, and, and I think that's, that, I certainly have that, I'm sure Greg has it too, I think that seems like that's the best thing I can do, you know, and that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be as good a person. So, I think it's, it's vital to me, yeah. Has the band ever had an existential crisis? Oh God, sure. Oh, that's... You're that's looking pretty... at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't take the soul role, but, uh, you know, it, it's sort of... It's, it's, when you play in a band, you've got all these personalities, and so they bring in all their own lives and whatever's going on there, and then there's just the dynamic of being, you know, geezers in a band, and... Uh, <laughs> So that brings in a whole other. You're not set. exactly geezers yet, but you sure weren't geezers here. Look at that photo. <laughs> oh. That's the high fives. Yeah. That's you know, it's funny because eh? we've never really been young. Like, I mean, you know, we look young. <laughs> but even the, I mean, now this is this the high five. So we, we yeah. were in our 20s. But Blue Rodeo, the early pictures, we're 30. We look 12. It's ridiculous. It's pretty fantastic, right? How about the, another band here? This is, this is, they sound young. You guys still sound young, but watch this. I love this performance. Save us oh, no. <laughs> That's Steve Adorno's stuff. <laughs> oh, he's a famous man, right? Or uh, friends? <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's like a bad Saturday night skit. <laughs> that bear is incredible. Well, that's enough of that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Even do rodeo at the time, right? No, we actually fly to France. Fly, fly, fly to, to France. France, and the drummer, his uh, brother, went to film school, mm -hmm. so he he made a couple of those videos, and we we of course they just must have been a very good school. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I don't think he's a filmmaker today. <laughs> but but well, somehow, kid, that guy put it up on online. How much has the dynamic between the two of you changed from those days? I, look, I think we were friends then. I mean, we're we're our dynamics different because we're older and, and we've been doing this a long time and we've grown accustomed to being in a band. And we were still new and waiters. We were more waiters than we were band members in those days. But 
I, I even I see that and I think, no, we still, you know, so much has happened to us and, and we have this funny experience that we look at each other and think, really? Like us? You know? And, well, actually, and, it's a little easier for you. When I look up there and I see this old man sitting here, <laughs> I say, who is that guy? Come on. What? You're like, you throw your hair down in your face again. I, don't I thought that was really who nice. this guy is. He looks nothing like the guy that I. <laughs> but what would you say to that guy if you could, have, if you could just have a moment? Ah. Uh, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't have much to say to him. No. <laughs> Jim, what would you say to that guy? If you Come had on. I, it doesn't seem that funny to me. I, I mean, I think it's funny. I, re I recognize that we were, you know, you pretend a bit. You try on a few cloaks when you're, when you're starting in a band to figure out what works. And certainly for us, leaving New York was to get rid of all those cloaks and just play what was relatively natural to us. I mean, we did come back still as... Toronto Cowboys, and that's a bit of a fake anyway, but... It's one of my favorite things about you is the fact that you're Toronto Cowboys. I remember getting in his car and, be, and driving, because I did not want to leave New York. I love New York. And getting in his car, and he was like total hayseed all of a sudden. And then the farm report comes on, and he turns it up, I think, oh my God, <laughs> what is happening to us? <laughs> when did you know that, your, that Devin was going to be, your, your son was going to become one? Well, I mean, you know, there was, look, when he was 12 years old, he, he wanted us to buy him Jelly Roll Morton albums. It's so, so weird, eh? I know. So, I mean, he always had carved out this very uh, unique interest in, in music. And, uh, but I, I don't think it was until his last years of, of high school that it, it dawned on me. He's done things so secretively. Like, when I went to see him first, after he was out of university and he started playing, he had all the songs I'd never heard. I said, whose songs are those? He said, those are my songs. I said, how could I not have heard these? You live in our house. You know, he said, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Is it strange for a guy who the idea of wanting to be noticed that now you're your wife's second favorite band in the house? <laughs> <laughs> I was always second favorite. That's OK. This, Unless Sting dies, I'll never get to be number one. <laughs> Stick around more with Blue Rodeo right after this. <laughs> Coming up, yes, he's a gentleman. But who is Jim's musical nemesis? We'll see if we can pry that out of him next. Well, you're saying you're, get, you're getting a 13 or 14 year old a girl screaming at you at concerts. I think, you know, kids are, are a lot more sophisticated. You know, so good. Than, you know, when I was a kid, I was a lot more sophisticated than my parents, at least I thought. So good. And, uh, <laughs> But, uh, you guys you know, are friends, right? <laughs> barely. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how success really yeah. squashes any friendship. Separate interviews, please. Oh. Oh, good. CBC Midday. I believe Terry Sagan is the host on that one. <laughs> what was that show? Midday. The reason I, I, I in, this, in this conversation, I'm focusing so much on the relationship between the two is because one would think that over time the wear and tear would eventually wear something out but when you hear this record and you see you perform there's an energy in it that's different there's a there's a smirk in the band the songs are fantastic i mean it sincerely and you. and you guys seem like you have your whatever that is that you need you got it well you certainly burn off a lot of stuff you know you, there's there's something about your sort of mid-career years where you're i don't know whether you're just tired of touring you're tired of climbing the yeah, ladder sure. or you're just sort of resentful of each other and other people in the band. There's just a lot more friction. It's harder to get over. And that stuff has been burned out of us. <laughs> and, and, and we have enjoyed each other's company. And, you know, it's a strange life. You do, too. You lead a strange life, too. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have somebody to share it with and somebody that's close and shares the same sense of humor you do. So, you know, because often we'll be, like, among normal people, and we're a bit too harsh for normal people. <laughs> And I can see them looking at me, they oh, God, i got to chill that. And then I've, i got to get around Greg again so I can be myself. All right, anthropology time. Do you have a nemesis band? You see them walking down the streets and you uh, fake a smile. I do, but can't say. You really do? Oh, yeah, can't say. Well, it's not a band, it's one guy. No, it'd be a band. It's, a band? it's a band? It's a band. Who's the guy? Well, we can't say. I think, oh, yeah, no, but I, I can't say. No, but is, yeah. it, the, is it the hockey guy? Say. Is it the hockey guy? Well, no, but You Bidini? can't say. Yeah, no, 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 I don't have anything against Bidini. I was at a oh, party I mean, with yeah, him on okay. the weekend. I love Bidini, but I was No, but I have a button. Oh, Buppins yeah. made anybody but this band. Really? Yeah. Headley? What? <laughs> no, well, I would never is reveal. Is it personal or musical? I, I, I would imagine it's both. <laughs> well, who should we ask? No, <laughs> I want to know who this band is. If you could ask Prime Minister Harper one question, 
that he could not escape answering ah. truthfully, what would it be? Well, I, why have you dismantled all our environmental policies? Sure. It's a wonderful band that are Blue Rodeo. Now, they're going to play a Christmas special, which we're very excited about. A holiday. So are we. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Do you like Christmas? <laughs> I love Christmas. You like Christmas? <laughs> you? Oh, I do, yeah. All right. Will you come back and play on Friday for us? We'd love to. We don't have a lot of bands playing here uh, during the week on the show. Uh, we should have more, and no better way to kick it off the season with these wonderful people. So Christmas Eve, our Christmas music special, and then Friday they'll be here. Their tour kicks off January 2nd in the great city of Vancouver. What a pleasure. Thanks, Thank Jim. you very much. Nice to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're everybody. We'll be right back. I don't know what I'm going to